of Africa region underwent five successive seasons of failed rains, leading to devastating famine, death of livestock, and withering of crops, further worsening food shortages. The resultant economic hardship followed years of declining agricultural production in our country. This meant that the earnings of people employed in agriculture who make up to 70% of the country's workforce were diminishing as the cost of living rose steeply. Scarcity of essential food items drove the cost of food as a share of household expenditure all the way to 54% on average. <clears throat> For these reasons, the bottom-up economic transformation agenda recognized that Kenya's poor economic performance was primarily due to underperformance of agriculture. Agriculture's contribution to employment, to incomes, foreign exchange, cost of living, and industrialization has two related implications. One, neglecting to invest in agriculture deprives the economy of a tremendous opportunity to grow steadily, increasing unemployment, poverty, and inequality. Two strategic interventions in agriculture can ignite the national economy and set it on the path to inclusive growth. On my first day in office, I outlined to the nation the hard times and difficult choices we faced, as well as the respective costs and benefits of policies at the time and the strategies proposed in our agenda. It was clear that low agricultural productivity was not only raising the cost of living, but also driving poverty among millions whose livelihoods are connected to agriculture. And I have said 70% of all employment is from the agricultural sector with its linkages in manufacturing, value addition, and agro-processing. At the same time, the importation of food items and expenditure on subsidies, including duty waivers, were depleting our foreign exchange and exerting severe budgetary pressure without attacking the fundamental productivity problem. We were living dangerously and beyond our means. I therefore propose to retire the prevailing policy of subsidizing consumption in favor of subsidizing production. Instead, Asante Sana, I think we can begin. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, making it to this uh, press, uh, press briefing. For years now, life has been very difficult for millions of Kenyans due to unemployment, low incomes, and the rising cost of essential commodities. The COVID-19 pandemic worsened this situation in two directions. The measures taken to contain the spread of infections basically shut down the economy, closing up opportunities to work and earn a living and disrupted global supply chains, causing shortages that drove the prices of basic goods beyond the reach of many households. In addition, Kenya and the entire Horn of Africa region underwent five successive seasons of failed rains, leading to devastating famine, death of livestock, and withering of crops, further worsening food shortages. The resultant economic hardship followed years of declining agricultural production in our country. This meant that the 